explain to me, first of all, what is the Children's Advocate of Jamaica? All right, so the Children's Advocate of Jamaica is an office. Well, I'm the Children's Advocate, first of all, and I head the Office of the Children's Advocate, which is a commission of our Jamaican Parliament, which would be synonymous with your Congress. And essentially, it's a specialized agency that has overarching powers of supervision, monitoring, um, instituting legal action, making comments on legislation and policies, and just educating people about what children's rights are, how they are to be protected, what's in the best interest for children, and if anybody breaches those rights or hurts children, then we have the legal authority to hold them accountable. I look through your booklet of guidelines, and I'm serious about this. It's a book that should be taken worldwide. That's how thorough it is, that's how good it is at protecting children. Take me through your thought process when you put that together and what exactly it is. All right, so we were seeing at the office a lot of children who were re-traumatized by the system. These were children who were already broken because they had very, very negative experiences, many times at the hands of relatives or people who they knew and trusted. And so psychologically, they were already broken and impaired. And when you have a child who is so broken, that gets up the courage to make a report and go through the process, hoping for justice in the system. But the system, because of how it is structured, re-traumatizes that child and makes the process of recovery that much more difficult. We said that something is inherently wrong with that, and as an office that has the responsibility to really safeguard children and to protect their rights and promote their best interests, we had to step in to do something. And so the general thought process is that you can't leave a child's recovery or the intervention that that, that child gets to chance. If the child meets an officer who gets it, then they'll have a great process. If they get an officer who has no clue, then it can be a life-altering negative impact on that child. So we wanted to standardize systems, have minimum standards that ensure that there is child-appropriate and child-friendly justice and have the system responding to them instead of hurting them. I've, I've traveled a lot around the U.S., Canada, speaking on topics like this. And from my perspective, you're a godsend to, to the world. What, what made you do this booklet? It is so thorough in terms of protecting children. What was your, again, your thought process and conclusion? That we just had to do better for our children. Uh, my, my background as well is I'm an attorney at law and for several years I've prosecuted. And so while I've never had that personal experience of having gone through childhood trauma, thank God for that, I have seen firsthand how it deliberates and literally shuts children down. And so I thought that it was only natural, not only a legal responsibility, but a moral one to have the system cater for them so that we can do this. Because at the end of the day, it's always better to have that chance to build a very positive child who is very much valuing self and self-esteem than to try to fix a broken adult. And so we just see it as our responsibility to do everything we can to have children have the best outcomes, not only in the justice process, but throughout any kind of childhood experience that they can face. Is there anything I didn't ask you that you feel needs to be said? Uh, no, I think, well, the only thing I should perhaps have said as well is that the guidelines really look at the entire system. So we tell judges what to do if they have a case involving a child victim. If the child is a little hesitant and breaking down, we have things in the guidelines that say, take reasonable breaks. Find out if the child has a psychologist or a support person. We have guidelines that tell prosecutors what to do. If you have a child victim, for example, have that court orientation. You can't be meeting the child the first time when you're going to cross-examine or, or have that child in court. Uh, we tell defense counselors well what to do. We tell correctional service people what to do. And so it really is an all-encompassing, very simple one, two, three-step guide that helps every single player in the justice sector deal with any child who comes into contact in whatever, in, in whatever category.